folks, this is Josh Stony Ridge Farmer. Welcome to the farm vlog today. Today we are doing storm prep. So we're getting ready to get hit with a significant snowstorm. We don't get this kind of weather around here and this kind of weather shuts down the entire planet for the south. So in other words, if we go to the grocery store right now, there'll be no bread, there'll be no milk, there'll be no eggs. Good thing we have all that stuff already and we're prepared, but we have to do a few things here in order to be prepared for a snowstorm of this significance. So come along today on the farm vlog. I'm going to walk you around, show you what I do to get prepared for a snowstorm so that we're not left out in the cold. All right. So what's the difference you might say? What's the difference in a storm here versus a storm in Utah? So we are about 10 minutes away from the North Carolina Virginia border near uh, the biggest town I guess in Virginia is Martinsville where the racetrack is. We are on the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains. In other words, this way is flat and this way is mountains. So we're right on that western facing or northern northwest facing slope that's going to get pounded with this snowstorm that's coming in. We're supposed to get a significant amount of snow somewhere in the neighborhood of 8 to 13 inches. We don't get that kind of snow around here. That kind of snow load on buildings and on barns is a very very big concern so we've got to do some things in order to be prepared so that we're not screwed first thing we got to do is make sure our vehicles are full of fuel in case we got to get out of here in case we run in a ditch or in case we get into a situation where you have to sit in the truck or the car and wait for somebody for a significant amount of time you want to be full of fuel we also need to fill every fuel can that we have or gas can that we have here on the farm to make sure we can keep fuel in the tractors and we can keep fuel in the generator so the first order of business fill the gator up with fuel fill the tractors up with fuel fill the trucks up with fuel and fill the generator up with fuel have the generator out back set out ready to rock and roll so all i've got to do is push a button start it up and we're running on generator power so that's what we're going to do today preparations first thing we're going to do is get our generator out of the shop here this is our generator this is a little troy built generator that we've had for a number of years it's done a great job it is a 7,000 watt generator with 10,500 watts of cranking power which means it will run the heating and will run the air conditioner it won't run the heat strips for the emergency heat but it will run the heat pump now in case you guys are new to the channel we live in a 14 by 80 mobile home right now while we're building our farm and our dream home so we didn't need a huge huge generator the biggest most important thing is that 10,500 cranking amps that will also run our well pump and our water heater all important stuff. Normally I keep this thing all the way full all of the time. Make sure there's nothing I can contaminate this guy with. He's pretty full. I think we could top it off just a little bit. So we'll set this guy to the side and top it off. This uh, gas can filler, you can get this kit. I'll post a link down below. This is a water spout for your gas can, but a lot better than those slow pour restricted gas filler necks get this guy topped off he'll probably take I think the thing holds about six gallons there we go good to go so just want to make sure we're all topped off everything needs to be topped off we never know we might have days and days without power okay next thing I want to do is get down here and check the oil make sure it looks good too I like to change the oil in this thing about every eight hours so if we're looking too black, we may go on and change it. Everything looks pretty good. We'll tip it up a little bit so I can see what the oil looks like. Oh yeah, she's still fairly clear, looking good. And I do a full synthetic oil change on this so I don't have to worry about it so much. The lifespan of these little engines is the motor oil that you put in them. So we should be good to go. This thing has a reminder system right here on this side that tells me everything I need to know. It tells me how much load I'm pulling and tells me basically all the information I need to know, how many hours since last oil change, all that cool stuff. We're going to fire it up, do a test run real quick to make sure it's going to run properly so we can just go back and pull the cord. It has a push button power source 
with a starter on it, but the battery's dead right now and I don't have really the time or don't want to put the effort into charging it up right now. So let's get her fired up. We'll reach back here and turn on the gas. I always turn the gas off every time I use this. So in other words, when I shut it down, I shut it down by turning the gas off, not by turning the power off. So we'll make sure everything's turned on here. All the breakers are on, on, good to go. We'll give it a full choke, pull the choke lever. Give her a tug. Generator fired right up like a charm. It always starts pretty easy. Probably next year I'll replace the oil and put a new spark plug in. Or if we have a power outage here, it's time to do a good service on it. So we got the generator running back there. Everything's good. We'll turn the fuel off and let it run out like we always do. If we stick to that and stay consistent, then we won't have issues with the carburetor with this fancy new type of fuel. Now I always burn a non-ethanol fuel in my small engines, but who really knows? Is it non-ethanol? I don't know. Is there a way I can check? I don't know. So I always shut it off anyway. That way the carburetor doesn't get any corrosion inside of it. So we're going to take the truck. We'll go fill up all of our fuel canisters. Another thing we have to do. So this is our mobile chicken coop. This mobile chicken coop is not going to be mobile in the snow, especially in 12 inches of snow. So what I got to do tonight is sneak out here. We already went ahead and processed. That's our uh, chicken plucker. We already went ahead and processed the meat birds before this storm. And you'll probably see that video either early next week or maybe tomorrow. I'm not positive. But we processed the chickens already that we're going to use for meat birds and these birds need to go into the regular chicken coop. So tonight after the sun goes down I'll come out I'll catch these birds and I'll take them down here to our big chicken coop where our laying hens live and they'll be just fine right there. Now there may be a little pecking order but that's okay we'll have a video a whole video dedicated to intermingling your chickens with new chickens. There is a science behind it so that they don't get pecked to death. Now, we have the Buick Grand National and the Oldsmobile under this shed right here. 12 inches of snow on one of these carports. I've seen them collapse before. I worry about them collapsing on my cars. I don't want them to collapse on my hot rod car for sure. I definitely don't want them to collapse on the Grand National. So probably what we're going to do is pull as much as I hate to do this and let them get snowed on but I'm gonna pull out the Oldsmobile and the Grand National just in case that shed gives way and that way we'll be covered I'll park our tractor underneath there it won't hurt the tractor if the shed kind of gives way a little bit but it sure would tear up the car we got to get the tractor we got to put the bucket on the tractor so we can move snow and we've got to put the scrape blade on the back of the tractor so we can scrape this driveway and our driveway is pretty long and as you can see we live way down a dirt road nobody's coming to scrape this thing like i said in the south when a storm like this hits the whole world shuts down we won't see snow plows for probably two days back on these rural roads. They'll hit the hot spots, they'll hit the main roads, and right now they're brining all the bridges and all the roads with that saltwater brine, but we won't get service like that. So we're back in the country, way back in the country. So just gotta get a few things ready. I'm gonna run to the store and I'll be right back. So there's really nothing to do with the laying hens right here. Pretty simple, we just make sure they've got plenty of food and water. The temperature, no biggie, no worries there. So here's what I mean by the carport. So we have, the Grand National parked under here in the Olds and the tin runs horizontally not vertically so snow won't slide off of this and that's what I mean these things are generally used in a southern type area that doesn't get very much snow so that's why I'm worried about that building getting a little bit too much snow load on it. So the rest of the buildings on the farm have this vertical type roof so snow will slide off of it. Now I do have a guard right here to keep it from sliding off and tearing the gutters off of the building. I'll keep the wood stove fired up in here and try to keep the snow melted off of here. If we get more than I'm gonna say eight maybe ten inches I'll start worrying about it. I'll make sure if it's a fluffy snow no biggie whatsoever. If the wind's blowing, it'll blow it right off. But if it's a wet snow and it sits there, it's dangerous. We're going to go up here to the goat pen and give the goats two round bales of hay.
not quite ideal. I'd rather it be laying over like this. Ugh. There we go. Sweet. What are you doing, buddy? What are you doing, buddy? Huh? What are you doing, Lexi? Anytime this tractor's in motion, I'm always thinking about what needs to be done. So I'm also grading the driveway out a little bit too. Got a few low spots that need to be addressed. Always thinking. guys so the hay that we're getting is mostly Johnson grass hay which is good for the goats but not so good for cows so we're using up bad hay first before we start using up good hay for the goats hopefully we'll get these fences built here in the next month or so once we get dry weather enough to get in to get the fence lines cleared and then we'll have our cows over here in this pasture so we are across from the house it's about a Know, about a six minute round trip trek to go get a bale of hay. My thought in managing a farm and in managing a piece of land is whenever the tractor's moving, your brain should be moving. So if you can knock two birds out with one stone, why not do it? A lot of work here, a lot of stuff. You can lighten your load by 20 seconds a day, it adds up. <laughs> I'm gonna have to flip that one over too. That's all right. Make it tough. <laughs> Farm tough, baby. Woo! So we got all the hay bales in place. We're gonna take the box scrape off and put the scrape blade on because that's what I need to clear snow off of the driveway. And then we'll put the bucket on just in case I've got to push some stuff. Pretty cool. Then we'll get some firewood, put it in the back of the gator, take it down to the shop. couple pins here and we should be loose. Whew, that one just didn't even have a pin holding it in. I had a little trouble with this top link for a while. Soaked it in some diesel fuel. It was locked up. Soaked it in some diesel fuel and let's go now. Hmm, right in the face. Super awesome. Kind of like a punch to the jaw. This is held on with a pin system, just like that. Pretty cool. Smacked in the jaw right there. Gonna have to put some degreaser on that. <laughs> that looks like it worked out great. Let's see here. Oh yeah. Awesome. All right, so I gotta pull this pin right here and it's propped up on some tires right now because the rod that holds it up uh, broke off. It was kind of weird. This is stuck, it's seized up. Show you a little secret. Give it a whack. Good to go. This little shim goes right here. Hopefully, there we go. Slide that guy in, slide my pin into place hopefully there we go all right things are working out the stars are in line perfect drop that pin in good to go we'll do that for both sides and then we'll hook up this top link right here now once we get it hooked up i'll tell you why i'm using this for scraping the snow versus using the box scrape The scrape blade needs to be turned around and basically angled 
So it grabs the snow and it kicks it out of the driveway. Go one way, it'll kick it this way. We go back the other way, it'll kick it out that way. That's pretty simple. This thing adjusts down side to side. It swings this way and the blade itself will rotate in this direction. In other words, I can move the blade, I can offset the blade over this direction. We don't need to do that for moving snow, but if we do need to make a minor adjustment, it's as simple as pulling two pins. Cool. Now we are quite prepared for a snowstorm with the tractor. This four wheel drive tractor kicks butt in the snow, man. It does a great job. The first time it snowed, all my neighbors thought I was crazy because I was like, man, I got my new tractor. I want to try that thing out. So I just ripped it up down the driveway, went down my road, cleaned that off, went up to the blacktop road up here, cleaned all that off. Just had a blast with it. Good stuff. Next thing we talked about was putting on the bucket. So we had the hay spear on. We started out with the pallet forks. Then we put the hay spear on, we went and got some hay. Now we pull these two levers up, basically two levers hold that in place and it hooks into place right here. So all you do, it's a skid steer quick attach. I'll pull up, I'll set it down, I'll drop the bale spear, I'll pull up, bloop, lift up, and the bucket's on. Awesome. Well, it's always nice to spend the end of the day here at the wood pile. We're gonna get some firewood together. So me and Mrs. Stony Ridge can snuggle up by the fire. We'll load the gator up here. Take this stuff down to the shop. So normally guys I just back in here with the load of wood but I want to show you a cool product that a buddy of mine makes. It's called the Log Ox Sling. Now you might have seen this on other people's channels. That's cool if you've seen it on other people's channels. I really really support what this company does. They're an American company. They're following the American dream. It's all made in the USA. A heavy duty canvas bag for carrying your wood in. Basically you just put it over your shoulder like so and your arm goes through a hole right here. In other words, you don't have to carry firewood into the house from that carrier thing. You've got it right here. Very, very easy. Basically, we got some big old logs in here. It takes all of the weight off of your back from carrying that, and that's what Log Ox is all about. The whole company is all about saving your back. So this device right here, just basically load it up with firewood however you want bigger logs doesn't matter as long as you can get a hold of it with one hand you can load it up with the other hand this is the log ox sling you can pick it up there's a link down below this is not even available to the public yet it's not mass produced yet this is called a kickstarter program and my buddy austin's trying to fund this to get a kickstarter for his business pretty cool these logs are a little bit big for me to get with one hand there we go very very simply it just holds everything, cradles everything, all right? And then you can take all this debris and go outside and dust it off. I'll show you. American company with a dream. You don't see that much anymore. So basically, any wood shavings that might be in there, just shake it off, take this off, hang it up on a hook, good to go. Log Ox Sling. There'll be a link down in the video description. Again, this is a Kickstarter program, so you can pre-order this and get it at a discount down below. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this little look into my life, into what goes on here on the farm to prepare for a storm. If you're new to the farm vlog here, be sure you pound that like button, subscribe to the channel, click the little bell icon down there to notify when I post a new video, and we'll give you a storm update when all this storm hits. So we're supposed to get somewhere in the neighborhood of three to five inches of snow tonight and tomorrow, an additional eight to 13 inches is what I'm seeing on the weather. Holy cow. It's gonna be a challenge, but we'll get out on the gator tomorrow. We'll have some fun and we'll show you what's going on. Thanks a lot, guys. We'll see you next time on the Stony Ridge Farm. All right? Woo! Yes, I was Yes, I will.